On the December 20th, OpenAI announced their new model, which is called O3. And in my opinion, this is the single biggest AI leap of the year, because this model is so good at complex reasoning, solving math problems, solving complex coding problems, and anything research related. In my opinion, this is already AGI, which means artificial general intelligence, which is AI that is capable of solving pretty much all of the problems that we face in our day-to-day -day lives. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how this model works and how you can use it to win in your industry. The model will be publicly launched at the end of January, so you still have time to prepare. So why do I think that the model is so good? Look at these benchmarks that they've provided during the presentation. The first one is not that important, look at the second one. It's about Code Forces, the main platform for the competitive programming in the whole world. I myself participate there, I wrote more than 100 contests there, and my rating was 2100. Considering that I spent more than 10 years first in math competitions and then in programming competitions, really trying to put as much effort as I can to become great at it. And this model scored 2700. It is so much bigger than what I was capable to do. It is called International Grandmaster Level, so only 150 people in the world are better than that. It is absolutely crazy, and to explain it to you even in more simple terms, look at that. O3 beats Google Software Engineers at coding by an order of magnitude. Why is that? To get into Google, software engineers had to go through the big, complex path of the interviewing process. And the hardest part there is algorithmic interviews. It is where you have to show that you are really capable of solving complex, creative problems, that you can show your intelligence. It's not about that you know some frameworks, that you know programming languages, it's a different thing. And getting back to this rating on Code Forces, if you have a rating of 2000, you're acing all of these algorithmic interviews. So it is absolutely enough to get hired into Google. And this model gets 2700. This is absolutely insane and mind-blowing for me. And now let's get to the main gist of the presentation. My name is Oleg. I am an AI software engineer with experience in three big tech firms. I have applied AI across different sectors. And in this presentation, I'm gonna show you three things. First of all, how all three works, then seven real-world use cases. This will be immensely valuable for you. And then a practical guide on what to do in order to win. If you are a business owner or an AI enthusiast, I will show you where to start, how to actually use AI in your operations to win in your industry. Now let's begin from understanding of how O3 works. There are two major things that made this model so much smarter than previous models. First of all is chain of thought. Imagine how you're solving a problem. You're not trying to generate a final answer right away. You're growing through different steps, analyzing different ideas, and only then you're coming up with the final solution. This model does the same. But they also added simulated reasoning. It's the process of trying to make this thinking process more intelligent, more efficient. I'll provide you an example for that. Imagine a physics professor trying to solve a problem. His chain of thought will be probably intelligent, concise, and quite short. He will end up with the solution quickly. Imagine a student trying to solve the same problem. He might actually solve it, but probably his chain of thought will be more messy, more complicated, and he will need more thoughts to actually get to the final stage, the final solution. And OpenAI's idea behind this training was to make this model think better, think more intelligently, hoping that it will in return bring more capabilities of this model, it will be smarter and it will be able to solve more complex tasks. And of course, they combined all that with previous ideas from GPT-4 and even older models. And now let's go to the real world use cases. But first of all, a disclaimer, all of these use cases, they were available even before O3 releasing. But the smarter artificial intelligence gets, the easier and the more general commands you can feed to it and it will successfully complete them. This is the thing. All of these tasks, they were able to be solved by AI, but you will need to find units specifically. You will probably need to define a very narrow task set that you're focusing on. And with the smarter models, you don't need all that you will be able to feed very general commands and still get a right final answer. So the first real world use case is about data analysis and decision support. Imagine you are a business executive, you have 
lot of data about your company and AI will sift through your spreadsheets, CRMs or ERP data to highlight trends and next steps. Imagine an example. A small retail chain has three store managers, each spending an hour a day on reports. Imagine AI will automate 70% of that work. How big of a deal that would be? And this is only one automation through the whole work process. Imagine if we will automate 80% of the work process. Each of the parts will automate like by two thirds. How big of a deal that would be? The next use case is about software development with AI agents. We already have tools that help you develop software code faster like Devin or Cursor, but they are using different open AI models under the hood and imagine they will use all three. How much better that would be. Imagine your dev team spends two hours a day debugging and right now this process will be automated by 80%. This is insanely valuable. The next use case is about next level customer support chatbot. Imagine the AI that is able to tackle cross referencing cases. You have a huge FAQ and now you have a request to a customer support, which is complex that needs this part of FAQ, this part and this. And then you have to think through all them to come up with the right answer. AI will be able to do that. Imagine an e-commerce store that has 200 support tickets weekly and 50 of them are often very complex. AI will be able to solve that. The next use case is about screening AI. Imagine you're a recruiter in a company and you're spending six hours per week to go through 100 resumes to find those candidates who are actually a good fit from the job requirements standpoint that has a great cultural fit with your company. Now AI will be able to do that because it will be able to reason to analyze this kind of deep concepts, what is the right cultural fit to your company and match it with the right candidates, reducing your time. And again, this is automating only a part of the process. We can automate many parts of this pipeline of work of recruiter, for instance. The next use case is about AI driven marketing content. Imagine an AI that is able to adapt to your brand voice and with it help you with your ads, help you with scripts for your videos generate posts for your social media accounts or help with SEO. As an example, a startup spends 10 hours a week brainstorming campaigns and now this thing will be reduced by 80% with this very intelligent AI. The next one is financial forecasting, handling budgets or cash flow scenarios like what if. Imagine you're an operations manager and you're spending eight hours each month forecasting what this cut might affect your company and all that will be streamlined just to two hours of work. You will be able to play different scenarios like if the interest rate goes to that level, how our company will feel. The next example is about research and development, prototyping new products or deep diving into scientific papers. Imagine a product team reading 10 patent docs a week and now it will be able to spend only five hours to summarize all that with this high-grade AI work with only the final result with the gist, the condensed version of these patents, and then analyze what to do next. This is so much more efficient. And now, since we've covered real world use cases, let's go for the practical guide where I'll show you what to do in order to win. This is particularly helpful if you're a business owner or a business executive and you want to use AI in your operations, but you don't know how, or maybe you're facing a lot of obstacles and fears along the way. So let's go. First of all, start with why and what. Before doing anything with AI, ask yourself, what job or process am I trying to improve? AI works best when it solves a clear problem. Look for tasks that are boring, repetitive, or take a lot of time, like data entry, scheduling, or answering basic customer questions. Because too many people are trying to fix everything at the same time. You have to be very intentional about what you're doing here. As a simple example, imagine that you have a bakery. You could use AI to predict how many cupcakes you might sell tomorrow so you don't overbake or underbake. The next step is to understand that good input equals good output. AI is like a magic mirror. It only reflects what you show it. If you tell it something unclear or incomplete, garbage in, you will get an unhelpful answer garbage out because so many people are complaining that GPT is not yielding proper results, that ChatGPT is very silly or OpenAI models are bad and many of them are actually trying to fit a very short, narrow, not clear, not specific 
question to them and they're expecting somehow to get good results. It is ridiculous, like when you're asking another person to help you do something, when you have an employee and you're asking the person to help you with this specific task, you're trying to convey as much context and as much details as possible. And only then you actually might expect good results. And with AI, it is completely the same. The more details you give AI about what you need, the better your results will be. As a simple example, if you want a, a summary of sales data, give AI the full sales report and clearly state what you want to see. For instance, show me how many products we sold each day for the last week. The next step is to pick one tool and try it out. There are hundreds of AI solutions, some for writing, some for data analysis, some for customer support. Don't get stuck deciding, just pick one reputable tool or platform that fits your problem that you've identified on the first step. You learn AI by doing. Jump in with a tool that's easy to use. Many have simple user interfaces or free trials and see how it helps. If you are not sure which to pick, try a well-known AI chatbot or a no-code AI platform. Look for one that has friendly tutorials so you can get started quickly. So at this stage, you don't have to be overwhelmed by the huge amounts of tools. You have to just pick one right that works for you and you will go and grow from there. The next step is to measure small wins. This is your ROI, return on investment. This is very important because many business owners, many people who are trying to use AI in their operations are faced with the problem. What is the ROI that I'll get? And of course, in many cases, it's indeed hard to measure. So you have to start with some small things, measure ROI from there, and then you will be able to easily predict what ROI you might expect in the future from this sort of automation. Start with small goals, like cutting down time spent on one task by 20 or making 10% sales. Start, start with small goals, like cutting down time spent on it. Start with small goals, like cutting down time spent on one task by 20% or making 10% more sales from better predictions. Seeing little improvements helps you understand the real value AI brings and you will be later on asking less questions about the ROI. It also convinces your team and your wallet that AI is worth it. For example, if your AI, for example, if your AI tool helps you send customer emails faster, track how many hours you save each week. If you say, say, for example, if your AI helps, for example, if your AI tool helps you send customer emails faster, track how many hours you save each week. If you save, say, five hours, that's real time you can spend on other important tasks. And the final stage is to grow step by step. You don't need for a whole army. And the final stage is to grow step by step. There is no need for a whole IT army in the beginning. You don't need fancy machines or huge teams to start with AI. Lots of AI services are cloud-based, meaning you just need an internet connection and they're very cheap to use in the beginning. You can start small with free or low cost tools, then gradually scale up. If AI delivers results, then you can invest in bigger projects or more advanced tools later. Maybe you can also order custom AI development for your company, but that will happen later on down the line. For example, if your bakery's cupcake forecasting goes well, you could add more AI features like automatically ordering supplies when they run low or personalizing marketing emails to customers. That was it. Subscribe for more practical AI content without fluff.